Well, everybody, we have been working on the starter for, what, two days now? And we can't get it to work. We have replaced all the parts and I just, I'm at a loss. So I'm gonna have to do some more research. And right now, um, I think this one's a failure. Oh yeah, I have to drink my pickle beer. You always drink your pickle beer when you fail at something. You know what? This whole pickle beer thing is stupid. I. These things are so disgusting. Why did we even start doing this in the first place? I'm not drinking that. What's that? Oh, dinner's ready? Okay. I'm just gonna put my tools away and I'll be right there. Huh. What is that? All right, time to get this video put together and put online. What? What is that? What? What is this? Alexa, turn off my alarm. I hope everybody was able to learn a valuable lesson today, that if you screw up and fail at something in your garage, you must punish yourself by drinking a pickle beer. And now, we all know the consequences of what happens if you don't. Let's take a moment to reflect, and please enjoy today's video. Now that we have that little lesson out of the way, let me introduce you to today's project, which my 50-50 chance, I would say, turn into an expensive failure. I have a sailboat that I race with a local club in North Texas. This is not my sailboat. This is a model of a sailboat. And this, although he is ruggedly handsome, is not me. This is a G.I. Joe. I can tell it's easy to get the two of us confused. We're just gonna let this guy hang out right here. Much like this model, my sailboat has lights on it. And if you observe, there's no engine. There's no way to power these lights. We just have sails and the fickle mistress known as the wind. And these lights, I have to have them on my sailboat. They're required by law. If I don't have them, I'll get pulled over by the sailboat police. To power these lights, my sailboat uses a battery. It uses a big, heavy 12-volt car battery, about this proportion to little G.I. Joe. And I constantly have to haul the big battery on the boat, and haul the big battery off the boat, and take it home, and plug it in, and charge it, and then bring it back to the boat, and it goes dead, and it goes flat. It's just, it's a pain in the butt. And on top of that, since I raced this sailboat, that battery weighs a lot, and racing Wait, like, it's not good. Lighter equals faster. So this has me thinking of a solution. And the solution is right here. I have a lot of power tool batteries, and these are really lightweight. They have a lot of juice. They're easy to charge. So can I power my sailboat off of my power tool batteries? I think so. And also, I bought a lot of parts on Amazon to try and make this work. That probably wasn't the best idea. I think all of these are actually fragile electronics. The sailboat power system is 12 volt. It's just like a car. So our goal is to figure out how to turn this 20 volt power tool battery into 12 volts with everything that I purchased. And I think I got all of the parts that I need to do this. If we do this successfully, you'll probably see another video where I try and waterproof the whole thing and actually plug it into the boat. Um, if I'm unsuccessful, I will cry in shame in the corner drinking a pickle beer because we know what happens when you don't drink your pickle beers. I've got my battery that we're gonna be working with. I've got my multimeter, I've got wire, I've got connectors. Let's open up these packages and I will show you how I think we're gonna put this whole thing together. The first box, a battery adapter. Pretty simple, all this does is allow me to connect two wires to my battery, it clicks in, and then I can just get power off of my battery. Let's 
second package is actually another battery adapter that I ordered. Um, I forgot I ordered two of them. This one was maybe $10 online, works with all DeWalt batteries. This one, about $15 online, actually has an on and off switch and a fuse. So I think we're gonna use the one with the fuse. That just seems safer. The first thing I'm going to check is how much power is coming off of these batteries. These are 20 volt batteries. My boat is 12 volts, but I've also read that your 20 volt battery usually only gives off about 18 or so volts. So let's see what we're actually working with. And I got a new multimeter. It's auto ranging. I didn't know how honestly they worked before. Um, so this is gonna be a surprise. What's an ohm? Multimeter's ready to go, battery switched on. Let's see how much juice we get coming out of this. 20.26 volts, so the internet was wrong. The battery, 20 volt battery, does put out 20 volts. Who would have thought? That is not gonna work. 20 volts will fry the electronics in my boat. So that brings us to this right here. This, if I ordered correctly, is packaged really well. This little guy is a step down, a battery step down controller. And what it's going to do is it's going to turn my 20 volts into 12 volts that my boat can use. There are a lot of parts that came with like a fan mount and all these other things. So I might have to take a look and see if I need to install a fan on this. So it seems like if it's stepping down the power, it's probably gonna get pretty hot. But this is not the only thing we need because these batteries, if you drain them all the way, you can kill them, you can fry them. In fact, I have done that before with one of my big, big 60 volt batteries and they are not cheap to replace. And we don't wanna do that. That brings us to these parts. These are basically low voltage safety switches. If it detects the voltage on your battery getting too low, it's gonna cut off the flow so you don't kill your batteries. I've got two different kinds. This one is basically hardwired to cut off at 14 or 15 volts. Is that right? No, I don't know if that's right. Hold on. These are programmable. You can set the voltage they disconnect at. And this one is hardwired. I like these because I can tinker with it and set the voltage, but the hardwired ones are supposed to be a lot more reliable. So this is pretty much what our final setup is gonna look like. We're going to have our battery on the battery adapter, going through this switch in the fuse to our battery safety cutoff, which then goes to our voltage step-down controller. And then over here, where you don't see anything, we will have the boat getting 12 volts of power. I've already shorted out this battery a couple times um, just by connecting the tips together on these wires. So I'm going to use my power supply. I'm gonna crank it up to the 20 volts we have coming out of the battery. I'm going to get all of this wired up. We'll get the multimeter out. And if we have 12 volts coming out the other end, we win. A little nervous, here we go. That was easier than I thought to hook up. Everything just plugged into each other. We have our battery adapter with our fuse and our switch going into our battery cutoff controller, going into our voltage step down. Please ignore the fact that I used all red wires. That's just what I had lying around. We're gonna flip the switch and then that should turn on. And we have our output on the other side that hopefully we can get 12 volts out of. Oh, I do not want to drink the pickle beer. Here we go. Nothing happened. I would have imagined that would have turned on. Here you have front row seats to whether or not this is gonna work. I'll plug this battery in. 
We should have the green light turn on here, letting me know power is flowing through here. It's not being disconnected because voltage is too low. And then hopefully that screen turns on and we have 12 volts coming out of that little box. Ooh. We are getting 20.3 volts in. No, out, we're sending 20 out. We're getting 20 in, we're sending all 20 out. We don't wanna do that, we wanna step it down a little bit. I need to read the instructions and figure out how to step this down. I like the battery meter too, tell me that my battery's full. Instructions were read and I think, I think we, I think we pulled it off here. So again, we have our DeWalt 20 volt battery with this battery adapter feeding into our cutoff. When the voltage gets down to 15 volts, this little thing is gonna cut the power so we're not draining our battery anymore and we do not kill our battery. And then if we follow the lines over here, we have 21 going in, 12 coming out. And just because I'm a skeptical guy, let's test this out real quick with our meter. Let's see. Negative, positive, hmm. According to our multimeter, we're only getting 11 and a half volts out. So I am just gonna turn this dial to crank the output up a little bit. And we are now getting 12 and a half volts out. I think that means we spared ourselves from a pickle beer tonight. I'm actually really impressed that this worked. I was kind of scared when my nice adapter with the fuse and with the switch didn't work, that this whole thing was gonna go down the drain and that I would be drinking a pickle beer and paying for my failure. But yeah, I think we're onto something here. Next up, I need to find a waterproof box to hold all this. And then probably I'm gonna wind up printing up some brackets to hold all these little controllers so they don't rattle around and get squished by the battery. And then I have to figure out how to actually hook this into the boat. Um, the boat, like I said, it just takes a 12 volt car battery. So there's just battery lugs on there. Maybe I find some plugs. Maybe I do something a little nicer than battery lugs, or maybe I just have some bolts sticking out of the side of my waterproof box that, um, yeah, that makes this whole thing work. We can find a better solution than that. So tune in in a couple weeks so you'll see the end result of hopefully success where I'm powering my sailboat off of power tool batteries. And I will leave you with this thought. Um, this adapter, about $15, $15 or so online. The step down, about another $20 online. And our little protection box, about $20 online. So we're looking at about $55 worth of parts. And I find myself asking, why I didn't just get like a cheap Walmart motorcycle battery to power my boat? Because that would have been the same price. No, not a fail, still not a fail.